In this video, we're going to look at this result concerning factorials, and it might look like quite an abstract result at first, but it turns out it's actually quite useful, especially for working with infinite series which contain factorials. And in fact, I've linked above to an example of that in another video. So before we get into proving this result, let's just think about what a factorial is. So to take a simple example, 5 factorial, if you're new to factorials, well first of all, factorials are written with this exclamation mark, and 5 factorial just simply means multiply 5 to all the numbers smaller than 5. So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And that's what the factorial notation uh, tells us to do. So that's an example of a particular number. But in general, if you've got n factorial, the same principle applies. That is just multiplying n to all the numbers below n. Now n could be any number, so we're just dealing in general terms. So it will be n times the number 1 smaller than n, which is n minus 1, times the number 1 smaller than that, which is n minus 2. And that just carries on, blah, 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 all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. Basically all the way until you get to 1. So that's just a reminder um, about how factorials work, or if you're new to factorials, that's what factorials are. So keeping that in mind, let's switch back to our problem. This is the result we want to prove that n over n plus 1 factorial is equal to two fractions, 1 over n factorial minus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Again, it looks very abstract, but it is quite a useful result. And let's have a look at where this actually comes from. So we're actually going to start the other way around. So the result is normally written like this, but we're going to start here and try and prove that these two fractions can be combined into this one fraction. So let's start with 1 over n factorial minus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Now if you think about combining fractions, adding or subtracting them, whether they're numerical fractions or algebraic fractions or even if they've got factorials in them, you can only do that if you've got a common denominator on the fraction. So that's what we need to set out to achieve to make these the same so we can then subtract one from the other. So to achieve that, we're going to start by doing a little bit of an algebraic trick, I guess. And what we're going to do is multiply this fraction top and bottom by n plus 1. So 1 times n plus 1 is just n plus 1 n factorial times n plus 1. Let's write that as n plus 1 in a bracket times n factorial. The second fraction we're not going to change. We're just going to leave that the same as 1 over n plus 1 factorial. So looking at these two fractions now, even though we've adjusted this one, it doesn't appear to have the same denominator as the other one. So we don't appear to have achieved our goal of making a common denominator. But let's think about what this guy here is. Let's do a bit of side working. So n plus 1 multiplied to n factorial. Well, that's just going to be equal to n plus 1 times n factorial, which is this guy up here. So let's just write that in. So that's going to be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 blah 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 all the way down until we get to 1 so 3 times 2 times 1 I'll just write in 2 times 1 so if we look at that more closely we've started with n plus 1 and then we've got the next term as this term with 1 taken off and then 1 taken off and 1 taken off in other words this is the normal factorial setup but it's a factorial for n plus 1. So this guy here is just n plus 1 factorial. I don't really, well, I guess I probably do need the bracket there, so n plus 1 factorial. So n plus 1 times n factorial is n plus 1 factorial. That in itself is actually quite a good result to learn and memorize if you're working regularly with factorials. So that tells us our denominator on this first fraction can be rewritten. So the numerator will stay the same, n plus 1. The denominator, though, is just n plus 1 factorial. And of course, that now lines up with the denominator of our other fraction. So by doing that little algebraic trick and by knowing a little bit about how factorials work, we've been able to make a common denominator. So taking this forward, I think I'll just put it here. We've now got two fractions that we can combine. The numerators will combine, so it's going to be n plus 1 minus 1 over our common denominator, which is n plus 1 factorial. Just a little bit of tidying up to do now. So n plus 1 minus 1, the 1's obviously cancel, and we're just left with n over n plus 1 factorial. So if you look where we started, this guy here, two fractions, we've been able 
through some algebra to turn that into the single fraction and that's what we set out to do to prove that that is equal to that. Spinning that around the other way we could write that is equal to that and that's how the result is normally presented. So that's the, the derivation of that result, where that result comes from. Like I said earlier, this kind of result is going to be useful in certain scenarios, in particular for working with infinite series that um, use factorials. And that's got something to do with a, a, a technique called telescoping. So check out the linked video to have a look at an example of how that might work in practice.